This box contains the brand new Prusa i3 Mark IV, the latest iteration of one of the world's most popular 3D printers. Yet in a world where every 3D printing enthusiast currently wants to print faster and faster, is a bed slinging 3D printer that costs $800 as a kid and $1100 assembled still relevant? I bought one on release day, printed now almost 200 hours with it and am going to talk with you about its strengths and weaknesses and of course compare it to its biggest rival Bamboo Labs X1 and P1P. Is the Mark III the machine many have been waiting for so long? Or is it just too little too late? Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Voxel PLA. Get one kilogram of their reliable Pro PLA for only $16.99 with free shipping in the US when ordering three spools or more. Visit them at voxelpla.com. Prusa's last major i3 release, the Mark III, was over five and a half years ago. And even though mine used to be my daily driver with thousands of hours of printing on it, it does start to look really dated. The time of the old Mark III was also the time of the Endor III and its countless copies and derivatives. And even though the price tag of the flood of cheap Chinese 3D printers made 3D printing even more accessible, barely any of them really challenged Prusa's offerings in the semi-professional niche. Well, until last year, when Bamboo Lab shook the market with their X1 and P1P 3D printers, which basically did everything better than any other commercial 3D printers at a price just around the $1,000 mark. Many people said that this is going to be the end of Prusa, because their current cash cow, the Mark III, couldn't compete with Bamboo Lab's offering because it was basically 5 years old. Yet out of nowhere, two weeks ago they announced the new Mark IV, ready to ship and without crowdfunding and pre-orders. I purchased one, yes with my own money, because Prusa rarely gives away free review samples for new products. So if you want to make my investment worthwhile and decide to buy a brand new Mark IV or an upgrade kit, consider using my links below. If you think I'm just a horrible Prusa shill, let me know down in the comments because I tried to take a look at it as objectively as possible. I got the assembled version which cost $1099 and after my intern Jan from Jantech helped me take it out of the box and remove some foam bits, it was up and running seriously within 5 minutes. From a distance it doesn't look a lot different from an old Mark III and even the specs are almost similar. 300 degrees Celsius all metal hot end, 120 degree heated bed with spring steel sheets, 250 by 210 by 210 millimeter build volume. But if we give it a closer look, around 90% of the parts are new. We get thicker C-rods, a sheet metal electronics box with 32-bit electronics and Ethernet and Wi-Fi connectivity and noticeably thicker, still 3D printed plastic components. Yet the most obvious difference is the big color screen in the front with a programmable LED bar below, which is controlled via the well-known encoder dial. This seems to be a touchscreen, but the current firmware on the machine doesn't use that feature yet. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a theme on the machine and there are also other features on the Mark IV where the hardware is there but the software doesn't make use of it yet. The next obvious and probably most important difference to the Mark III is the new tool head with their new next shooter. This is now a fully custom extrusion system without any off-the-shelf E3D V6 parts or Bontech gears. And this is for good. Behind the feeder cover is the heart of the extruder, a planetary gearbox with a 10 to 1 gear ratio that drives the huge extruder gear onto which two idlers push the filament. This results in a huge contact area, reducing filament slipping and giving you more consistent extrusions regardless of the speed. Since the filament gets slightly bent around the extruder gear, it will be interesting to see how it handles super brittle filaments in the future. Flexibles on the complete opposite side of the spectrum work pretty well and I could print the spaghetti like 30D TPU from Fibology at serious speeds without a problem. When we move down to where the plastic gets molten, we can also find the Mark IV's new hot end. It's neither a Revo nor Revo compatible, yet Prusa also adapted the multi-metallic nozzle heat break combination that eliminates plastic leaking problems. The nozzle brake the Mark IV comes with is one piece, so you'll have to change the whole part if you want to switch between diameters. 
Fortunately, Prusa is not as much locking you into their system as E3D does and offers these adapters that allow you to use all of your old V6 nozzles. The whole assembly with heater block, thermistor and heater itself can now be way easier swap because you simply undo the two screws on the side to slide everything out after you unplug the electronics from the new daughter board that sits at the back of the extruder. This board is a great addition because it allows you to change components without rerunning the wires through the wiring loom. Unfortunately, it is only a breakout board, so you still have a ton of individual wires back to the main board instead of a clean bus connection as the Prusa XL for example uses. Yet this board still has some surprises and one of them is the HX717 load cell amplifier. This chip is used to read the strain gauge attached to the aluminum piece that's heatsink and extruder mount simultaneously. This strain gauge forms a load cell just like in your kitchen scale and allows the Mark IV to do bed probing directly with its nozzle. This should eliminate all first layer adjustments regardless of the nozzle or print bed you use. And since the Mark IV only probes the area where you later print, you can even put a piece of cardboard on your bed and then print on it. So far this system has been working really well for me, but the load sensor can do even more. Due to the shape of the aluminum piece, it can also sense the extrusion force. So with how much power the extruder needs to push the filament into the nozzle. This can potentially allow sensing a nozzle clog or inconsistencies during extrusion. Unfortunately, this is also one of the several things where the hardware is already there, but the firmware isn't ready yet. This load cell could be a game changer in quality assurance for 3D prints if the Prusa team decides to monitor and evaluate the extrusion forces over a print and tell the user if everything was within a certain tolerance window. Regarding quality assurance, the heatsink also has an additional thermistor to spot heat creep quickly. The last thing to say about the new tool head is that it still has a filament runout sensor, a silent hot end cooling fan, Guten Tag. and a new radial part cooling fan. At first glance, this looks like one of the underpowered 4010 fans that many endos used, but it's actually a powerful yet quite Guten Tag. 5010 blower. Talking about quiet operation, one of the things I personally always enjoyed about my Prusas is how quiet they were during printing, especially in silent mode. The Mark IV is still silent compared to most other 3D printers, but I do have the feeling that the print noise of the Mark IV is a bit louder than on its predecessor and it also lacks a silent mode. Most might not even notice the difference, but since I'm a bit sensitive in that regard, I have to point this out. Overall, the print head got lighter and doesn't produce out that much anymore, which is good if we also want to print faster with the new Mark IV. Currently, the Mark IV is faster and saves with the standard printing profiles around 10 to 20% on printing time over the old Mark III, yet it doesn't come anywhere close to the speeds that Bamboo Labs printers can achieve. As I've shown in my last video, printing fast also comes with its own sort of problems, but even if we lower the printing speeds on the X1 or P1P to something more reasonable, they're still significantly faster than Prusa's Mark IV. I mean, nobody really expected this bad slinger to outperform a Core XY with carbon rods. Prusa recently posted a video showing a 20 minute 3D Banshee printed on a Mark IV, but that still used an unreleased alpha firmware with input shaping. Yes, the Mark IV finally has a new 32-bit controller, allowing easier implementation of advanced features. Still, it does not support any input shaping yet, which allows printing at high speeds and accelerations with only minimum ringing marks. And this is something I'm honestly a bit upset about. Prusa knew that this is one of the features that people expected in the Mark IV, and they even mentioned it as the first feature on their shop page. But if you, by the time this video released, bought a Mark IV, you won't be able to use it until they release it in the following months. As a paying customer, this theme of missing software features honestly bothers me a little, because even though I got a machine that works well right out of the box, the hardware could do more. The Mark IV definitely was delayed due to the part shortage the last years, but I would have hoped that they used the time to have some essential features that distinguish them from the masses ready and working once this machine ships. I know this sounds easier than it is in reality, but I'm sure many feel like myself. Fortunately, Prusa has quite a good track record supporting and improving their machines over the years with software and small hardware updates. This is why I'm also in a way really looking forward to the day once features like input shaping, the touchscreen or more use of the load cell will be added via an update. 
Talking about updates, Prusa once again offers hardware upgrades for the old Mark III to get some or even all of the features of the Mark IV into your Mark III. The Mark 3.5 upgrade will give you the 32-bit electronics with network connectivity and the color screen. The Mark 3.9 upgrade will also add the next router with a load cell and if you spend almost as much as a complete Mark IV kit, you can upgrade your Mark III to a Mark IV and get everything including the new 0.9 degree stepper motors that are supposed to eliminate the vertical fine line artifacts the Mark III was haunted with. So let's get to the print quality and compare it to the Mark III and also Bamboo Labs X1. Most of the parts that I tested were printed in Voxel PLA Pro, which brings me to today's video sponsor. Voxel PLA's filaments sell for only $16.99 per 1 kg spool. They ship free within the US if you order 3 spools or more. And if you need larger quantities, they even offer bulk discounts. Voxel PLA just announced three new colors, Lavender Purple, Ice Clear and Forest Green. They are, together with all original colors in stock and ready to ship out the same day. Voxel PLA developed their pro material for their own print farm, where they run 150 production machines, so you can be sure that you'll get a reliable material for your own projects or your business. So if you live in the US and want to restock your filament, visit them at voxelpla.com. Thanks to Voxel PLA for sponsoring this video. So first things first, comparing the print results from a Mark III and a Mark IV made me realize how bad the horizontal artifacts on the old machine really were. All the prints that I did on the new Mark III looked really good and the only surface defects I was still able to spot were some ringing artifacts at sharp corners and a teeny tiny bit of salmon skin. Yet you really need to look for them if you want to find them. I would really like to know if the salmon skin is caused by the old TMC2130 drivers that the Mark III still uses. Maybe one of you has a deeper insight. Yet the big question that everyone has is how the print results of the Mark III compare to Bamboo Labs machines. The first big difference is that many prints with the stock profiles came out mad on the X1 due to the high print speeds and extrusion rate about which I talked in my last video. Otherwise Bamboo Labs prints looked really well with even a bit smoother surfaces compared to the Mark IV up to the point where the input shaper used to get rid of the ringing marks also rounds out some corners losing a bit of fine details. Overall, print quality of the Mark IV is a significant step forward to the Mark III and basically on par with Bamboo Labs machines. The new cooling system also seems to do a good job. Once Prusa implements the input shaper, we might even be able to get rid of the slide ringing artifacts that we see at sharp corners. Since the Mark IV still lacks some major features, this can't be a full review of the machine, but using it over the last two weeks showed me that it is in most parts the long-awaited next iteration many have been waiting for. It's overall just a slight bit better in almost every regard to a Mark III and it's just a cleaner and more professional build with its new electronics and extruder. And in combination with Prusa Slice and the great working print and filament profiles makes it just a hassle-free tool to use, even though some things still need to be looked at. So if you loved your Mark III, you would be more than happy about the iteration. It's not a Core XY as many would have hoped, but as long as it's an i3 design, it will remain a bad slinger and we can only hope for a Prusa XL Mini at some point. Yet realistically, everyone will compare Prusa's new Mark IV to Bamboo Labs offerings, where the P1P is even slightly cheaper than a Mark IV kit and the fully enclosed X1 Carbon is just $100 more expensive than an assembled Mark IV. And objectively compared, Bamboo Labs machines are in almost any category better than a Mark IV. They're faster, they have a bigger build volume, the X1 is enclosed, they have a well-working multi-material system, they have cameras, the X1 has a build plate scanner and with the Bamboo Studio Slicer they offer a well-tuned hardware and software ecosystem. So why would anyone in their right mind buy a Prusa these days? Well, starting with software. The reason why Bamboo Studio is so good is that they reskinned Prusa Slicer and added a ton of feature from Super Slicer. The Slicer part of Bamboo Studio is open source, but so far Bamboo Lab hasn't given a lot back to the open source community. Bamboo Lab did a great job implementing every top of the line feature in their machine, where the community has developed many things and ideas. Still, neither the printer's firmware nor part of the mechanical design is available to the public to build upon. Consumer 3D printing has come to the point where it is today, largely due to the open source community's work and companies like Prusa also making their software and designs available. 
This sounds a bit like you should buy a Mark IV out of pity, so Prusa gets some kickback for the free work that they have done. And I'm sure that many will be calling me a Prusa shill now. And I admit I'm a bit of a Prusa fanboy because I bought my first Mark II in 2016 and it was the machine I grew this YouTube channel with. And after torturing it for thousands of hours, I got a Mark III in 2019, which I still use to this day because it has always been my fire and forget machine due to its reliability. The Mark IV might look on paper like an inferior product to its biggest competitor, and in some cases it is. Yet I'm sure that it will be another reliable and just as easy to use machine as its predecessors. If you omit printing speed, it's in terms of print quality and ease of use on par or better than a Bamboo Lab machine, not even speaking of long-term service. If that's worth paying for the premium it costs is something you'll have to decide on your own. Still, you'll always have to remember that this machine is built here in the EU at EU labor costs and conditions and Prusa also offers good customer assistance and supports their machines for years, which needs to be paid for. Part of what I paid for my machine is, in a way, a Prusa tax. Still, in return, they contribute to the community, keep developing one of the best slicers that everyone can use for free, and with printables.com, finally provide a great uncluttered Thingiverse alternative. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy my Bamboo Lab machines and I will continue using them a ton, especially for fast prototyping and high temp materials. It's a good thing that they entered the market because competition fuels innovation, lowers customer prices and also gave Prusa a kick in the butt. Since they have been successfully selling an almost 5 year old design in such a quick changing market, they definitely had a monopoly themselves. Yet I don't want to see Bamboo Lab taking over the whole market because long term a monopoly is not good for anyone. And this is the reason why I don't regret spending my money on the Mark IV. Compare buying a printer to a car. Even though there might be a car with better specs around, you might still spend the same or even more on another one because you already had two that served you well, or it's quieter or you like the brand more. The Mark IV is really nice to work with and you notice that it's made by people who use 3D printers themselves and if you ever loaded filament on a Prusa you will know why. There are still some features missing but with further firmware updates it will become even better. I'm sure beginners and professionals will be happy with a new Prusa. It is a steep price tag and there are way more affordable options on the market that might deliver almost as much as a Mark IV but they are often abandoned by the manufacturers after months and then the community needs to jump in for hard and firmware updates, which might be okay for some who enjoy tinkering and doesn't primarily need a tool. Yet praising the Mark IV aside, if you're looking for the maximum speed and want to print a lot of ABS, ASA or nylon or do multicolor printing, the X1 is the better option with its enclosure, carbon filter and the AMS. Yet you have to live with all of the downsides of cloud services and proprietary hard and software. But let me know in the comments, do you think I'm just a huge Prusa shill or do you also share my thoughts on why the Mark IV is a good machine even though it's a little late and that we can all benefit from what this community and consumer 3D printers in general were built on, freely sharing ideas, methods, designs and algorithms so that we can continue to innovate and not stagnate by proprietary technology. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye. <clears throat> with, spr with spring steel.